Given that Afghanistan has been a war-torn nation racked by bloodshed and poverty for the past 50 years, it is perhaps the last place in the world one would expect to undertake successful mega-projects. In today's video, we'll show you how Afghanistan tackles its water problem by building this artificial river. But before we get started, we kindly ask that you show your support by liking and subscribing to Mega World. We also value your opinions, so we encourage you to discuss these groundbreaking technologies in the comments section. What is the Cash Tapper Canal, why do they charge, and how did they manage to reach such a huge milestone? The Koch Tepper Canal, an artificial river in northern Afghanistan that runs from the AM Udarya River through the provinces of Jobsien and Far Yab, is 250 kilometers long, 150 meters wide, and 8.5 meters deep. Approximately half of the canal has already been built, and the remaining portion is being constructed at a brisk rate because of a growing crisis involving water and food shortages. Some nations across the nation that share a river with Afghanistan have expressed concern that the canal may alter how much river water they receive. Afghanistan, the only nation that in actuality does not profit from the river and is thus entitled to its fair portion of this canal, has promised to prevent such a thing from happening. It is a serious issue that needs urgent responses. Is a serious and urgent issue for the inhabitants of North Afghanistan, which has recently transformed into a dry desert. The canal will now be required to supply water to more than 1 million Afghans while enabling thousands of farmers to return to agriculture as a result of global warming diminishing. Groundwater reserves and a lack of adequate irrigation infrastructure. This will be accomplished by converting 55,000 hectares of land into farms, with a particular emphasis on wheat and cereals. In fact, by 2028, the nation hopes to start exporting wheat. Three phases are planned for completion of the project, which started in March 2022. The initial and subsequent phases entail. The third phase is devoted to the installation, nation of water irrigation systems, and other infrastructure, whereas the first two phases involve the actual digging of the canal. Initial cost estimates for the project, which is overseen by the Afghan National Development Corporation and is entirely supported by tax revenues, place the total cost at $500 million. However, recent estimates indicate a need for an additional $100 million, which makes us wonder how the Afghans managed to complete such a massive project with scant resources, outdated equipment, a small number of experienced engineers, and no outside assistance. Some Asian media outlets were also too critical when describing the construction of the Cash Tipper Canal. The supposed carelessness and engineering tactics, but we performed our research, therefore it goes without saying that those media outlets are completely mistaken. Don't forget, kindly like and subscribe. The government funded the project and planned it using extensive land surveying and soil studies, they did not send some diggers to carry out such complex work at random. One of the main goals of the studies was to make sure that water lifts are not required because of the associated costs of flood prevention during the winter and soil comparison. As a result, the canal had to follow a route on level ground with a height that matched the source areas on the Anudaria River. The canal path had to be placed on the most fertile land and in close proximity to towns and villages along the way. Once the canal path with 200 private contractors was distributed over 114 sections representing the first phase that extends 108 km years, they also had to make sure that the canal path is located on the most fertile lands. Each contractor lined up tens of excavators, leaving enough room between them for the full trucks. Up to 7,000 individuals, including excavator and haul truck drivers among others, contributed to the project's completion and are currently working on it after moving to the new location. Once a segment is established and authorized by the engineers and supervisors, the trucks would then be filled and depart in an organized way to dump their cargo in adjacent specified low-elevation regions. Following exact maps and specifications, the machines went on to the next part and replicated the procedure. The initial stage of the entire project required building 14 hydraulic gates, each of which is topped by a vehicle bridge. It's getting interesting. 
The 114 sections of these gates were divided from one another by a short wall of a few meters in order to regulate the filling process and prevent soil displacement at the banks. These gates were built to prevent flooding during the winter and times of heavy rain when the Amu Darya River levels rise. E.G1 section number 1, which lies closest to the Anu Darya River, was finished, the sections filled quite slowly. We must highlight that this canal's floor and sides were not lined with concrete slabs, which, depending on who you talk to, is either good or terrible. From there, further parts were progressively filled. In addition to higher groundwater reservoir levels that serve as backup water sources during potential severe droughts, the absence of concrete slabs would result in more natural irrigation in the future up to a kilometer from the canal sides. Additionally, there is the financial consideration because adding concrete slabs would have increased the cost by more than a billion dollars. Here are some blockbusters. In addition, two concrete bridges, one for the Heritage Bulk Highway and the other for the railway, were constructed. Needless to say, the Afghans kept things straightforward by using a solid reinforced concrete slab design, which involves a cast-in seat rather than the best parts of a significant irrigation pipeline network, which were also integrated with the first phase's completion and the surrounding area. Afghanistan simply cannot afford such infrastructure. During the conflict, additional water mains were erected to link with water pumps at adjacent villages and cities. These underground irrigation pipes are intended to provide farmers with access to water up to a few kilometers distant from the canal. In the last stage of construction phase 1, up to 1 million cubic meters of soil were removed every day, which is astounding considering that the majority of the excavators and haul trucks employed were outdated and, in some cases, from the 1960s. Contrary to some claims, the area around the canal has experienced and continues to experience an economic boom as thousands of workers are employed in the replanting of old farms and the improvement of roads. They have also planted thousands of trees along the canal banks to strengthen the soil and prevent erosion. A 20-kilometer area was also planted with a variety of crops to test the effectiveness of irrigation systems. Rather disgusting claims that all contractors and potential employees were and are currently receiving prompt and fair payments. Other phenomena we observed while examining the project included the diversity of the workforce and the high levels of optimism and happiness among the workers, farmers, and locals, who have endured decades of unfavorable conditions because of wars, droughts, a lack of water, and pervasive poverty. Another great thing that came to light with this study was the widespread use of solar panels to power houses and workshops. Small solar panel fields are also appearing in new forms to power water bumps in the nearby areas, which are largely cut off from the rest of the world due to a lack of power infrastructure. The entire project was intended to be finished in 2028, but at the current pace, we expect to be ready by as early as 2025. Additional bridges and culverts are also being built. Last but not least, it is important to stress that starvation is a real threat in Afghanistan, where the majority of the 40 million people live in rural and isolated regions. This is because the nation is subject to exceptionally heavy sanctions. Afghanistan's internationally recognized government was overthrown in a military coup in 2021. By the Taliban, and the nation instantly entered a diplomatic crisis. Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, two of Kabul's northern neighbors, made a different decision, putting aside the hardline group's contentious past with the former Soviet Central Asian republics and choosing dialogue over criticism and pressure. But the Taliban's massive canal project in Afghanistan, which is already taking form and that the Taliban is pursuing at a breakneck speed, is making the two water-scarce nations question whether or not maintaining strategic patience with the Islamic Fundamentalist Party would be fruitful. The Big Event and Boom According to Jennifer Brick Murdazashvili, founding director of the Center for Governance and Markets at the University of Pittsburgh, if you look at other projects that have involved Afghanistan and Central Asia in some way, there has often been a win-win element. The Kashtipa Irrigation Canal, on the other hand, will take substantial amounts of water from the transboundary Amu Darya River, which is rapidly disappearing. Since water is a limited resource and there don't appear to be any benefits for Afghanistan's neighbors, this is essentially a zero-sum situation, according to Murtaz Ashvali, 
who added that she anticipates the Central Asian nations to pursue a lot of quiet diplomacy on the project, which will increase the pressures placed on disproportionate agricultural sectors already struggling with climate change and historical mismanagement. Murtaz Ashfali asserted that the Taliban will be probing to see how far it can go, and that its neighbors to the downstream will need to adjust to this. Taliban 2.0 seems to like the idea of projecting state power, Murtaz Ashfali added, whereas Taliban 2.0, regime that ruled most of Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, was weighed down by insurgency and in some ways never really behaved like a state. Therefore, we do hope that further massive projects including infrastructure, water management, agriculture and energy will be implemented after this amazing one, which is sure to aid. Afghanistan is moving past its wartime scars and becoming a successful member of the world. We would love to hear your thoughts and insights in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with more fascinating